Hi, everybody. I'm Sean Slevin with Swim Strong Foundation in New York City, and so excited to wish Merle the happiest of birthdays and also to wish her the best on her endeavor as she tries to, and I'm sure she will, successfully swim 30K with the monofin. 30K on her 30th birthday. Merle, you rock. She is our superstar mermaid. And we are right behind you, uh, cheering you on for this wonderful event. I'm so excited for you, Merle, to be a part of your journey. You've accomplished so much in the years leading up to this day. And I just can't wait to be with you on this journey through the next 10 to see what you are able to uh, accomplish then. Merle has been kind to give us an opportunity to introduce our organization to those of you that don't know us. Swim Strong is a 501c3 not-for-profit here in New York City. We are primarily a volunteer-based organization and we are doing our best to reduce unintended drownings as well as water-based accidents. We're doing that in two ways. Traditionally, being in the pool, offering learn to swim lessons up through competitive skill lessons. Uh, we work with students as young as age three up through seniors, and we have adaptive programs for those that need that one-on-one -on -one special attention as well as the traditional learn to swim programs. And we work with those who wish to become competitive swimmers at any stage of their lives, whether they be age groupers, uh, those that wish to swim in masters, even um, those that are doing triathlons. So we are known for our stroke mechanics and are always happy to help those that have competitive skills become even more skilled. That's one side of our work. The other side of our work is going to the schools and addressing water safety related issues. Our program there is called No, K-N-O-W, No Before You Go. And we've reached about 19,000 uh, students in the time that we've been doing this, the pandemic, as difficult as it has been, has given us an opportunity to transform what was once a PowerPoint presentation now into four distinct products. The school-based product called the curriculum being the most robust and dense uh, of the programming. And then we have a program called a conversation about water safety, which may be used with groups, um, including swim teams, by the way, I remember before I started the organization uh, that I coached for many years a very competitive, dominant swim team, an age group swim team. We were pool rats. And on the occasion that we were invited to compete in open water, which for us happened to be the ocean out in the Rockaways, our kids really struggled um, because they just didn't understand the conditions of the water. So. Uh, it was, became apparent to me even back then that, ooh, water conditions are quite different one to another. I happen to have grown up swimming um, both in a pool and lake. So I did have the opportunity to have open water swimming early in, in my life. And even there, lakes are very different to the oceans, very different to the pools. River swimming is very different. So we need to understand this um, to better be able to navigate all of all of this, hence our programming. And so right now um, we have had 5,000 students go through our updated and new version, which may be delivered remotely or blended on Zoom, such as you and I are speaking. And we're really excited about that. So we're offering it to educators and I'll put a slide up later to provide some of that information to you. So you might ask what the genesis of, of this type of training program is about, because it is a little bit different. It really is focusing um, not so much on swim skills. As a matter of fact, I tell people you know, 
this is water safety training, no water required. So it's not focusing on swim skills. Instead, it's focusing on our environment and understanding that the nature conditions of water varies one to another. And we really need to understand that much more deeply because our world is changing around us. It's becoming so much more watery. Um, our water levels have been rising an inch to an inch and a half over the last dozen to 15 years. You may remember just last year, not only are our tropical storms and hurricanes increasing in intensity, but even in numbers, we had to go to a different alphabet to continue to name the storms last year. We had to go to the Greek alphabet. So you have our storms increasing in strength, increasing in number of storms per year, but yet decreasing in the amount of time between them. So communities don't have time to recover before the next storm comes. So we really need to uh, definitely address this. And then what we have seen here in New York City is the phenomenon that they're calling sunny day flooding. So while the rest of the country deals with flooding in the springtime, just because of natural um, ice and snow melt, we have an issue here where our streets are being covered with water, where it was never covered with water before. How so? Well, on our super tides, there's no place for the water to go. The surge is so great that it's forcing it up onto the roadways. So we are dealing with flooding where we never had it before. And it has nothing to do with rainfall. It has everything to do with high tides and super tides. So that's an adjustment for us as well. The trifecta for us in New York City and, and many cities is the fact that we're also developing our waterfronts as never before in our lifetimes. So that's wonderful for those of us that have the skills to safely navigate those waters because they understand the condition of that water. But that's not true for most of our citizens. Most of our citizens don't understand the different natures and conditions of, of bodies of water, and they don't have the swimming skills. So we're so concerned that our drowning rates and water-based accident rates are going to go through the roof. So we need to do something uh, to change that dynamic. And that's where you Know Before You Go comes in. We really want people to understand water in a much deeper way, much more viscerally, um, somewhat like when we get into our automobiles, what's the first thing we do? We buckle up. So we want people when they come to a body of water that they've never been to before, to in the back of their minds, be thinking of several questions. Is this a designated swimming space? Is there a lifeguard? Can I see what's the bottom of the water? Can I see to the bottom of the water? Is it clear or is it dark? Do I know what's under the surface of that water? Do I know what the topography is under the water? Do I know if there's current? Do I know the temperature of that water? Am I swimming with friends, colleagues that have stronger swimming skills than I or not? And if no, no, no is coming up as an answer to those questions, we don't even go near the water because the reality is Nobody goes to the water expecting a bad outcome. People are placing themselves in danger without realizing it. And then a bad situation happens. And that bad situation turns to a tragedy. And the reality is 95% of our drowning deaths and water-based accidents actually never had to happen. If you understood the nature and conditions and dangers of the water that you were about to get into, and you had those safe, you had those swimming skills, you could avoid the problem. So if you can't swim, don't go in. It's really that simple. Can't swim? Answers no, 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 no to all those questions. Do not go in the water. So our training, again, does focus on that uh, environmental educational piece to really help all of us, whether we can swim or we can't, understand our more watery world and how to be 
uh, safe as we navigate in, on, and around the waters. Um, so that all being said, I'm going to put up a screen right here just to share this with you. Here's the Know Before You Go program. And you can see a couple of things that are, are being covered. The drowning facts and statistics, some foundational water safety tips, the natural elements of different bodies of water from pools, lakes, ponds, rivers, and the ocean, uh, the dangers of rip currents and what causes them, how to identify them, and how to navigate them safely. Safety at water parks and while we're boating. And then of course, the seasonal dangers of those tropical storms, hurricanes, ice, and flooding. So we want everybody to have that deeper knowledge of respect for and understanding of the water so we can make decisions that keep us safe. That's the most important. So again, we have four products, the school-based one called the curriculum we've discussed, it's a lighter one for groups, including swim teams, because uh, most of our swimmers are pool rats and uh, haven't really had the experience of swimming in different open water conditions. So they need to know this as well. Not that they can't swim in those conditions, but they need to know how to adapt their swimming to be efficient and effective in those different waters. And then we also have two programs for families or individuals one called uh, Water Safety for All, and the other called a Social Justice Call to Action. And so in the Water Safety for All, we have a video and some activities that can be done with um, yourself or your family members. And we also have in the Social Justice Call to Action, a film called Blacks Can't Swim, which is done by our partner, Ed Okora. And he himself um, is a black man who could not swim. And he explored the stereotypical reasons why communities of color were disenfranchised from the water. And his goal is like ours to change that dynamic. So the film is included. There's also uh, a half a dozen articles in there on the history of why black and brown communities grew away from the water um, through current situation now, and also the information on um, drowning prevention through the, the program and different types of activities that can be done, even for little ones, because explaining these big concepts to them has to be done in a little softer, softer way so they can understand it. So reach out to me, um, go on to the website at swimstrongfoundation.org backslash no, K-N-O-W, hyphen before hyphen you hyphen go uh, to see all of those different programs and we wish you uh, safe, safety around the water as we move forward in our ever more watery world. So let's get back and continue to cheer on Merle as she makes this record-breaking, Guinness record-breaking uh, attempt to swim that 30K on the monofin on her 30th birthday. Brava, our favorite mermaid, Merle. We're right behind you. Swim strong, baby. <laughs> 